UK officials are so incensed over those photos being shared that the police stopped sharing information with the U.S. for a time today. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Theresa May met with President Trump at the NATO summit in Brussels. Going in, she said she wants to maintain its special security partnership with the U.S. Of course, that partnership is built on trust. And part of that trust is knowing that intelligence can be shared confidently. And I will be making clear to President Trump today that intelligence that is shared between law enforcement agencies must remain secure. The president, in turn, issued his own statement condemning the leaks. He asked the Justice Department and other agencies to launch a, quote, complete investigation. For more on this and the broader investigation into the bombing, I'm joined now by Ali Soufan. He's a former FBI special agent who handled several major terrorism investigations, including the 2000 al-Qaeda bombing of the USS Cole in Yemen. He now runs a consulting group and is author of the book Anatomy of Terror. Welcome back to the News Hour. Thank you. From an investigator's point of view, help me understand why the British would be so angry about these photos of these bomb-making parts. Why, why those being out there would bother them so much? Well, they have an ongoing investigation. And this investigation is way more than an act that already happened. There is an imminent threat that's unfolding in the UK. You want it to protect your investigative leads, number one. You need to protect the integrity of your evidence and of your investigation. And when you're trying to uh, catch uh, terrorists who are still on the loose, uh, you know, you don't want them to know what you know. So uh, as an investigator, I will, you know, and, and it happened to me personally, uh, you get so frustrated when you uh, see sometimes intentionally or unintentionally people hindering your investigation. So I don't blame the investigators on the ground Around to be really upset about leaks, uh, about any investigative leaks that uh, have been published either in papers or uh, broadcasted on television. Uh, I am just not sure that uh, they can put all the blame uh, on the United States. Uh, I think that's uh, very unfair. Um, I think uh, even in the, pic the pictures of the New York Times, I believe in the New York Times story, they said that they get access to them from British law enforcement sources. Uh, I think uh, leaks are really bad in this situation. It's not only reckless, it's dangerous when you have terrorists still on the loose. But to blame everything on the uh, people here uh, in the United States, I think it's not fair. I think they need to do a further investigation to know who's leaking what to whom. Just so I'm clear on this, the concern would be that, let's just say, the suspects in this case were to see those photographs. They would somehow know exactly what amount of evidence the police had in their custody, and that might then lead them to think, oh, they're much closer to getting me than, than I thought. Well, you know, first of all, I think the British were really upset about leaking the name of uh, the suicide bomber. Uh, maybe as an investigator, I don't want the name to be out. Uh, I want them to know that, I want them to think that uh, I'm still in the dark so I can have the advantage in identifying his friends, his support network, people who probably are working with him or supported him or aided him, you know? So I, I wanted to have the upper hand in these kind of things. Um, as for other um, evidence, that's collected from the scene, uh, they will be watching and they will be uh, hearing our analysis of it. And maybe they will even know how to do it better. I, I remember in some of the stories, there was some uh, analytical uh, um, pieces about uh, what's wrong with the device, what's wrong with the detonator. Uh, we have to be very careful, especially when you have an ongoing investigation unfolding so dangerous to our partners in the UK, that they raised the threat level in the country to critical, which is the third time they did that in like 10 years. So we have to be very careful and we have to respect um, uh, the circumstances on the ground, help them uh, protect the integrity of their investigation, but also um, uh, aid them uh, to, to, to arrest and apprehend uh, anyone who might be involved in the attack in Manchester or probably another imminent attack that might be uh, taking place. ISIS, as you know, took credit for this. And, and some people have theorized that ISIS will encourage more and more attacks like this as they lose more and more territory and fighters in Syria, in right. Iraq. Do you, do you believe that assessment? Do you think that, 
this is a sign of ISIS's strength or is this a sign of its weakness? Well, it's definitely a sign of both. <laughs> I mean, you know, ISIS is uh, losing territory in Syria and Iraq. Uh, ISIS is losing the so-called caliphate. They always bragged it's Baqiya and Baqiya with Tatamadad, which means remaining and expanding. Now it's definitely not remaining and absolutely not expanding. Um, so um, they are trying to inspire people to do terrorist attacks uh, around the world. And we've seen that in the United States. We've seen that in Europe. Now, what level of support, what level of uh, coordination and direction ISIS had with this Man Ma Manchester bombing yet to be seen? There are a lot of unknowns in this. Uh, but, you know, for example, as we've seen in the United States, ISIS claimed responsibility for attacks that they had nothing to do with whatsoever, just because they believed they might inspire the attack. Uh, so now we're seeing with, uh, with these kind of attacks, we're seeing the boundaries, the organizational boundaries uh, becoming more and more blurry. And the threat is a message. And that message uh, is the same. Uh, remember, ISIS uh, used to be a branch of Al-Qaeda. ISIS came right. out of Al-Qaeda. So ideologically speaking, um, they, they are the same. All right, Ali Sufan, thank you very much. Thank you.